Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. In this video, we're going to be looking at the general method that we can use to graph shifted cotangent graphs. So this will be in this general form, y equals a cotangent of bx minus c plus d. So you can see those shifts there in the form of the c and the d. And a couple notes before we dig into the method. Okay, first note that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that's helpful to know. We probably have already looked at the tangent graph. If not, uh, check the links in the video description. Um, and then also note that this method is for our shifted cotangent graphs. Like we said, they have that C and D term, or at least one of them. And so it's going to be a modification of our method for graphing basic cotangent graphs. And if you'd like to see that method in action or with examples, you can check the links out as well. All right, so here are our three steps. First, we'll find all the essential information. So this is really our step to get organized, do all of our analysis to make everything else easy for sketching the graph. In step two, we'll plot our base pattern and we'll talk about what that looks like in just a moment. In step three, you'll apply the shifts, you'll sketch in the cotangent curve, and then you'll repeat it for as many cycles as you need. So now let's take a look at each of these steps in detail and at the end, I'll provide a template that you can use so that it is really easy to stay organized. Okay, so step one, we want to find our essential information. As a reminder, here's our general form equation. And we want to analyze all of A, B, C, D, all those variables. So note that B and C, those are what happen within the cotangent function or the inputs. Um, those are going to be our horizontal transformations. Specifically, B tells us how many cycles we have of our graph between zero and pi. We also use it to find our period, so the length of one horizontal cycle. And you do that with pi over B. All right, C divided by B will give you your phase shift or your horizontal shift. And then we also will be able to find the asymptotes and we'll talk about a quick trick to get the equation for the asymptotes in just a minute. All right, so then A and D, those are our vertical transformations. A is going to be our factor for our vertical stretch or compression. So I like to think of those as our curve setting points, how stretched out are those? And we'll see those in the base pattern in the next step. D is going to be your vertical shift, so how many units up or down. And then once you do all that, you can decide on how to label your axes. So I call those your scale labels. And we do this pretty intentionally for the horizontal axis. Take your period and divide by four because that base pattern I mentioned that we're going to develop in step two um, will make use of this. There are four key points in that base pattern. And if you take your period and divide by four, each one of those will align nicely with your horizontal tick marks before you shift. And that just makes for some nice clean graphing. Usually, it'll work well to label your vertical axis by one. Um, sometimes you could do it by one half or two. You can make an adjustment if needed, but one typically works well. All right, and then finally, let's go back to the note about finding the asymptotes. So think back to your tangent graph. We said cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, and tangent has a zero at the origin or an x-intercept at the origin. And remember, when you try to take the reciprocal of a zero, one over zero is undefined. So you have an asymptote for cotangent x on the y-axis, or at x equals zero. And then those happen every pi, or every cycle. So the way we'll find our asymptotes, and we'll do this in some examples, so be sure to check out those videos. Take your horizontal transformations, or your inputs of the cotangent function, and set them equal to zero plus pi k, where k is an integer. And again, that's just our parent asymptote. Um, or a representation of the parent asymptotes of cotangent x. And then all you'll have to do is solve for x, and you'll have the equation for all the asymptotes of your graph. It's a neat little trick. Uh, watch some of the videos to graph cotangent examples, and you'll see those in action. And again, k is an integer, so just sub in different values for k, different integers for k, once you have your final equation, and you'll get all of your asymptotes. All right, so that's the biggest step it takes a lot. Like I said, we will have a nice template at the end of this. And as you work through a couple of examples, all of this will really fall into place nicely. Um, final thing I just highlighted here that C over B and D, those are our phase shift and our vertical shift. So those are really the only different parts from our basic method for graphing 
unshifted cotangent graphs. And so if you already know that method, these are the only two extra additions that you really have to do. So it really is worth going back to check that method out as well. All right, so step two is to plot the base pattern. So our base pattern for cotangent, remember we just talked about, we start with an asymptote on the y-axis for our parent cotangent x graph. So our base pattern goes asymptote, first curve setting point, zero or x-intercept, second curve, curve setting point. Okay, and to find these in detail, here's a nice little formula to use. So you start with your asymptote on the y-axis or at x equals zero. Your first curve setting point will align with your first horizontal tick mark and its y-coordinate simply comes from your value a. And in the previous step, we talked about how a, that vertical stretch or shrink value, would help you set these curve setting points. Okay, the zero will happen at the second horizontal tick mark and this is moving to the right. And your final point in the base pattern, your second curve setting point, will happen at your third horizontal tick mark, and you get its y-coordinate by taking the opposite value of a. So pretty simple, especially once you practice it a little bit. Um, a quick note, this um, is when a is greater than zero, and then if you have a less than zero, you'll notice that you just have a reflection over the x-axis, so your original graph will look flipped vertically. All right, so really in this step, we are just graphing that base function. So we're taking our graph without the shifts. It's basically like graphing y equals a cotangent bx. And we're going to apply our shifts in step three. So let's look at that now. In step three, we'll take care of the shifts. We'll sketch in our cotangent curve and then we'll repeat. So remember that our shifts are C over B for the phase or horizontal shift. So you'll just move left or right, however many units that indicates. Our vertical shift is D, you'll move up or down, the corresponding number of units. You'll sketch in the cotangent curve, and then you'll repeat. So here's the template that I was talking about in step one. You have a really good organization for all of that analysis. And then a reminder for step two, plotting the base pattern, and step three, shift, sketch, and repeat. So without working a specific example, just to give you an idea of what this looks like, say you did all your analysis for step one, I'll post links for lots of examples, check those out, but we'll lightly plot our base pattern in step two. So it'll look something like this, okay? And so you can kind of see that cotangent curve here. And let's say that our shifts had been to move right two and up one, just arbitrary shifts here, just to show you how it works. So we'll move each of the components of our base pattern according to our shifts. So for example, take that asymptote and move it right two. Okay, moving it up one doesn't matter because it's a vertical asymptote. And your final asymptote would land here. So take each point now Shift right two units up one, right two units up one, right two units up one. And you can kind of see how this shifting would work in step three. So you'll have something that looks like this. Hopefully this helped you get a nice breakdown of our general method for graphing shifted cotangent graphs. Like I said, be sure to check the links in the video description. I'll have a playlist for cotangent and there will be all sorts of worked examples there. Check those out. Uh, once you work a few examples of graphing shifted cotangent graphs, you'll see that it's a pretty easy process, especially when you use this three steps to sketch template to keep yourself organized. So practice up, you can do it, and happy graphing.